Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series, The Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In Chapter 2, we venture to the Underworld as we follow the nightly adventures of Tarnum, the immortal hero. Alrighty folks, welcome back to Part 2 of the Conquest of the Underworld campaign for Heroes Chronicles. Scenario 3, Truth Within Nightmares. Tarnum must kill Sandro to get the key to the next level? All heroes are limited to level 18, but Tarnum and two of his best captains will transfer over to the next scenario. The Sword of Judgment will also carry over to the next scenario. Tarnum, of course, must not die. I'm going to go with one attack. Interesting that Sandro is the uh, gatekeeper of this mission. What a lad. The torments of the underworld are visited upon those who dwell there, which is why so many of its inhabitants are insane. After months in this dark land, Tarnum and his men began to succumb to the ghosts of their past, but none worse than the immortal hero. Now I must face Sandro, the necromancer who holds the key to the next level of the underworld. He's not likely to give it up freely, and Sandro dwells in the deepest, most vile parts of these caverns. However, I hear rumours of two lesser demon barons who also protect this plain. One good piece of news though, the angels and archangels have decided to join the fight. Lovely. A ragged looking griffin swoops down from the sky and faints dead away at your feet. Looks as if the poor creature had been forced to fight a hundred times. Wondering why he didn't just fly away, you find the shackles of war firmly bound on his feet. You remove them and order some of the men to give the proud creature a decent burial. Nice. One of the best artifacts, <laughs> truly. Right, so we can do a match level one, maybe do a marketplace first so that we can get some troops. Okay, shackles. Oh, we do keep the Helm of Heavenly Enlightenment. Nice. That's a big deal. So we're going to build the Angelic Alliance again. Against Sandro of all people. The irony. <laughs> That's quite funny. Well, at least two parts. I mean, we've already got Heaven Helm of Heavenly Enlightenment. And then we'll pick up Sword of Judgment. So that's two parts of Angelic Alliance. Uh, let's go ahead and take down some wraiths. No, no, no. There it is. I wonder where my destroy undead spell was. I was like, I'm pretty sure I picked it up. Alright, match level one. I'm just hoping no one abandons me, ab ab ambushes me. The men were not pleased about walking over the bones of the dead, and you should have heeded some of the premonitions. The bones begin to move on their own, and suddenly you are attacked. No, no, no. Ah. Well then. Luckily, spells are still pretty good. Bunch of courage, nice.
My dreams have turned to those days when I was rebuilding the glory of my people back before I became the immortal hero. There is nothing like the open road ahead of you and an army rumbling at your back. Even the smell of hundreds of men, orcs, goblins, wolf raiders and ogres was a comfort compared to the rotten egg stench of these caverns. I belonged to something greater than myself then. I was doing what was right by unifying my people under one banner, so we could win back our freedom from our oppressors. I miss those days. It's a hefty cost. Ooh, logistics is massive. Too bad it's not on Tarnum. Shoot. Okay, well that sucks. What damn cursed ground. <laughs> Yeah, sure it makes these fights a little bit more challenging, that's for sure. Queen Alison has moved into the castle. We discussed her participation in the exploration of this level, but I told her I needed someone I could trust to watch the castle. I think that convinced her. Surprisingly, she carries herself boldly and proudly even though we're surrounded by the never-fading reek of death. Most Arathian women would have fainted away. Even more impressive, the men don't seem to resent her presence. In fact, I think they've developed a newfound respect for their queen. Good. So, I'm not sure if that's on Cursed Ground or not. Probably not worth the risk. Cheaper than a destroy undead spell. No, no, no. Oh, I love how they've all grouped their uh, units up perfectly for that. Right, how are we doing for money? Is that 4G's per turn? Nice. Actually, might be bad. Indeed, it is. Thank <laughs> you. 
In my dreams, I think I can still hear the clash of arms as the wizard kings of Bracadoon sent their dogs to quell my rebellion. It was the first time I faced my oppressors in battle, and my army triumphed when all others thought we would fail. I can still see the look of fear on the faces of the cowardly wizards as we rose up and took back what was ours. My men were a little afraid as well. They had never known a life without servitude, but their courage hadn't been bred out of them yet. They rallied around me. It was a glorious moment in barbarian history, one I shall always remember. Pack of Manticles could be a difficult challenge. I already have the Helm of Heavenly Enlightenment. Reports have confirmed that the Sword of Judgment is somewhere on this plane of the Underworld. It is a powerful weapon for the forces of good, and we must find it. The clerics tell me that combining several other items with the necklace, the helm and the sword will create the Angelic Alliance, a formidable weapon with the power to not only increase the abilities of its wearer, but also cast prayer on any troops that follow him. Yeah, having literally just done uh, Shadow of Death, I know all too well how powerful that artifact is. And I approve of its construction. <laughs> Did I pick those up? I think I did. Yes. Tonight's dream turned to the day I first fought beside Hardak. He was older than me, even had a combat experience as a lowly foot soldier in the armies of the Wizard Kings. He would soon become a good friend and my most trusted captain. We were fighting against Bracadoon's wizards and the tide of battle had turned against us. My horse had been cut from underneath me and I was fighting hand to hand with golems, gargoyles and wizards. I saw a pack of gremlins swarm Hardak, yet he stood his ground even with a wound in the side. He knew he was dead but refused to retreat. So I hacked my way through to save his life. I carried Hardak back to our healers and returned to the fighting. Somehow we pulled off a victory that day, but at a great loss. Later, Hardak sought me out and stayed by my side to the end. Only, it wasn't the end either of us expected. Probably because you killed him. <laughs> Ooh, earth magic, nice. I do still need, um... Sure, why not? I do still need, uh, logistics and pathfinding, so here's hoping.
Okay, so plenty of necromancers then. Good to know. Diplomacy, okay. start upgrading my troops. And we need to start killing the enemy. So how do I get out of this place? Presumably up there. God damn it. These dreams were more like memories, only this time I felt like an observer. My friendship with Hardak wasn't born on the battlefield, it was born during a strategy session that came later. My bold attacks had won us many victories so far, so as we faced a sizeable combined force of Nagas and mages, I decided to use the same plan that had worked before, but Hardak was the only one courageous enough to tell me I was wrong. Attack this enemy like that, he said, and we'll leave most of our army dead on the battlefield. That is, if we win. Lure the Nagas out, draw them away from the mages, and then attack. I swallowed my pride and took Hardak's advice, and it's a good thing because the very next day we were ambushed, and we only survived because we didn't take many losses against the Nagas. That's when I knew to always keep Hardak close. Alright. I need to start doing some stuff. I do need... Uh Clear these out of the way. I'll bring Adelaide with me actually. Valeska can stay behind and defend. At this point it really is all about uh, spell power, not knowledge. Sure, why not? What else have they got down there? Okay, leave that for Adelaide to sort out. Ah, do we make one more trip? I guess we do. I'm going to get to their base in one week anyway, so one day even. Some nights my dreams are wild and unpredictable. I see bits and pieces of past battles. I hear the screams of the dying echoing in my ears. Then I sit bolt upright in my bed, drenched in a clammy sweat. Chills run over my skin as the horrifying faces still loom over me. Sometimes I can make the hideous faces disappear by shaking my head, but each time I close my eyes they return. I don't get much sleep anymore. I don't get much sleep. Alright, this is it. This is the army that we're going out with. Do or die.
Wonderful. Alright, let's finish this bad boy. We've got a large enough army now, we should be able to deal with anything the enemy has. The lands beyond are very dangerous. The guards eye you dubiously, but agree to let you by once you have achieved level 13. The guards acknowledge that you have indeed reached level 13. Do you wish to pass at this time? Yes. At first, the dream seemed like one of those distant memories of when I was the Barbarian King. But something was wrong. The bards were vital to the Barbarian people. We had been the slaves of the Wizard Kings for so long, we forgot who we were. They were our history. So when the bards were captured, I knew it was over if they were killed. Yes, I raised a force and broke the wall of Curl's Tower. We dominated his army. The courtyard was red with the blood of the mages. I reached Curl's private chambers only to find him cowering there, begging for his life. And here's where the dream veered from the memory. Instead of letting him go, I showed him no mercy. I slaughtered him on the spot because hanging from the trees in Curl's private garden were four figures swaying in the wind. The bards, dead. Our history was lost, forever changed, and I was to blame. I woke up weeping and confused. It was only a dream, wasn't it? I remember saving three of the bards. Our history was still safe. Now, well, that's going to change every turn. Since these are necromancers and they cover the area in darkness. So we need to get up here. An old man stumbles out from the blackened forest and speaks to you. If you follow the path north, then... And then east, you will find the hourglass of the evil hour. There is a seer who is willing to exchange much knowledge for that hourglass. She is located to the west. After saying that, he nods and holds out his hand. You give him a few gold coins and set him up with a good meal. I already have that. No, I don't. An escaped slave finds his way to your camp with some important information in exchange for your protection. I was on a work detail in the area and I happen to know that manticores protect the Sword of Judgment. The demons fear the Angelic Alliance so they guard the sword well in order to keep the Angelic Alliance from being assembled. You can find it to the north and then east of here at the end of a small valley. You give the man a small sum of gold and send him to your castle to be nursed back to health. I'm guessing that's what the green tent's for. I need to figure out where their enemy bases are though. That's the real win for us. I think I might need to start using uh, Adelaide as well actually. Strength-wise, we're massive. I just need to find a way to get to these guys. Ooh, Pendant of Courage. That's amazing. What an artifact. Queen Allison, thankfully, has been staying out of the battlefield as I requested. She's been a grateful distraction from my disturbing dreams, and she's been managing the more mundane tasks of a leader such as income and resources. I can't shake the feeling that I've met her before. I noticed it the first time we met. Something about her mannerisms. Or maybe the way she talks. Or could it be her fiery red hair? Sure, it's a popular colour among barbarians. But there's no way we could have met. I died before she was born. 
I wonder if it's Yala she reminds him of. You see the skeletal remains of some unfortunate soul hanging from a rotting tree. About the corpse's neck is the gleaming pendant of courage. But is this artifact worth fighting the Black Knights who guard it? Damn straight it is. There's a lot of them though. Luckily Maslow's a pretty good spell. And we're now at the point where we do significant damage. And we've got a pretty epic army too actually. Diplomacy. And that's plus three luck and morale for the boys. Ah, I hate the darkness, it's so annoying. So there. My information may be more common sense than secret, so I will not charge as much, says the crippled old demon sitting on a stump. You're tempted to kill him in case he's a spy or something. When you collect the artifacts to make the angelic alliance, you should keep them on your person. There are others here who are not very scrupulous and would steal it for themselves. I know that used to be my job. If you keep each piece yourself, then you won't have any problems assembling the Angelic Alliance later on. You give the elderly demon some gold for his good advice. Good advice? Really? <laughs> I don't know about that. It seems like uh, common, like you said, common sense, not really knowledge. I need to get to that base, but I don't know how to actually get there. Maybe he goes this way. It's like a little maze, this place. Okay, I need to go around the long... Wow, okay, that is a long way to go. Ooh, portal of glory, nice. As I polished my armour this morning, I caught a glimpse of myself in my chest plate. There are dark rings around my eyes and I've lost some weight. No surprise, really, since I've been getting such little sleep lately, I've been going without, staying up late into the night in order to avoid these haunting dreams. When I sleep, I see memories mixed and distorted with nightmarish possibilities. Lies. Why have I never been plagued by such dreams before? Is it this place? And why do they seem more real with each passing day? It's hard sometimes to determine the difference between the waking world and this horrid underworld, Today I fell asleep in the saddle and pictured myself in the mudland, conquering those people to make them part of my armies. The stinging painful insects, the sticky air, and the stinking vegetation. I was there for as long as my eyes were closed. Spread that you pay for information, says a ragged middle-aged woman collecting firewood. Give me 200 gold pieces and I'll tell you how to get to hidden empty castle. The woman is probably as mad as anyone down here, but today you feel charitable and pay her. She quickly hides the money in her dirty robes and says, All you need to do is go far east and head through the one-way monolith. Be fully armed though, bone dragons live near it and won't let anyone in or out. Surprisingly, it was valuable information indeed. Oh, these are sh not what I want. Oh well. It is what it is. Hmm. 
We actually should just see if we can get Town Portal. It's always worth a try. The castle's down here, isn't it? Okay, Orange has overtaken me. It's not ideal. And actually, the Kai was pretty strong. Stronger than Sandro, interestingly. Again, I dream I'm in the swamps, trying to get the natives to join me through the only method they understand, force. I am covered in mud and blood as I walk through the open gates of a fortress and stand before the throne of the Mudlands King, a lizardman so gaunt and pale grey that he could only be dead. Yet, the lizardman stands and gestures for me to sit. It's yours now, Charnum, the dead reptile says. Yours to destroy the throne of my people. You have won the right. But I shake my head. I am no longer want to sit in it. And then I open my eyes. A dream but I can still smell the rotting vegetation. I press my fist hard into my temples and begin crying. Dreams aren't supposed to be like this. I wonder if he's turning into like a proper necromancer. Like he has died. It's almost like he's coming back as not himself necessarily. Like the difference between this Tarnum and the Tarnum of the last... Um, uh, campaign is quite stark. That's a pretty big army. Damn. I was not sure that was going to kill. Oh, we've got um, things. They can't escape anyway. Keep forgetting that. Keep forgetting they can't escape with Shackles of War. I'm so used to playing to, like, get the two, uh, two goes back to back. And yet, that is not something we need now. Let me just straight up kill these fools and not worry about them retreating. Want a piece of advice, good sir? The voice startles you and you almost draw your sword until you see the young, nicely dressed woman nearby. You nod your head, suspecting that she would probably give it to you anyway. Visit all these learning stones. Each one can teach you something, but there are many of them around here. Every little bit will help you along the way. You offer her some gold and she holds out a hand to accept it. As you approach, however, her features change to that of a demon. You realise it's an ambush as the demon companions run out from behind some nearby rocks. Okay, no such luck on that one. Ooh, animate dead. That's probably worth picking up. That's definitely worth picking up. Yeesh. Okay, 
yes. Have we found another base at least? That's a positive. Come on, town put on my booty. Armageddon? <laughs> Fair. I heard some man last night, quite by accident. I was dreaming again of a battle. Apparently I had been screaming so loud I woke half the camp. When a young soldier entered my tent to wake me, I drew my sword and slashed out at him. Luckily the man stepped away, I only gave him a gash on the side and a broken rib. A cleric asked me about my dreams, mentioning that I appeared to be getting little sleep. Sir Tarnum, you are not the only one here who has been having trouble at night. Although your nightmares seem to be worse than the others, said the cleric. Perhaps I have more to dream about, I mumbled. I can give you a medicine to help you sleep. It won't help with the dreams, of course, but at least you'll be able to get some rest. An exhausted leader is a poor one. At this point, I would try anything. Oof, that was close. Well, I think we can use spells. To improve our odds there. you stop them recruiting any more troops I guess oh there's the teleporter or a teleporter I should say so there was a one way that's a two way system interesting okay that seems to be where the enemy keeps teleporting though so that's positive This must be the monolith the woman was talking about. Fortunately, you can return through this monolith in the f if the forces on the other side are too powerful for you. However, be careful because enemy heroes can also come through at any time. So she just mistook a one-way for a two-way system. Oh, actually, how powerful are these? He's quite weak. I guess I can always retreat or surrender with her anyway. Unless they've got shackles too, which would be bad. Oh, that's for Kyle. We don't take that fight. New no Siri. Long ago, powerful wizards were able to create magical artifacts. But time has caused us to forget how to make new items. Yaddy yaddy yaddy, want the orb of inhibition. Well. Now, this is interesting. Need to ferry up a big old army. Do 
We have found Vakayo at least. I know it's a dream the moment I realise I'm at the front of the horde, a barbarian army unlike any other. I look to my left, surveying the columns of orcs, ogres, goblins and behemoths, and above the brilliant thunderbird soar proudly. Then I glance to my right and my blood turns to ice. Knolls, Lizardmen and the other creatures of the Midlands all chained together, slaves. In order to free ourselves I enslaved another innocent people. Worse yet, they had suffered greatly at the hands of the wizards, and I had simply taken the place of their oppressors. I lower my head, closing my eyes, and then I wake. Ooh. I'll just take this place. 22-6. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here I can't actually get to Matey Boy. I just need to kill Sandra, right? So maybe we ignore Orange. There's also another teleporter there. Found another base. Wait, so they can't build dragons or anything? Interesting. Just want to scout with this guy. Still got a bigger army than me. Wow. Okay, I need you two to meet both. Another dream. We punched through the wall peaks deep into Brackadoon territory. I thought my victory was a certainty. In my arrogance, I believed I had broken the backs of the wizards. Not so. The spellcasters brought an avalanche down on the troops I left in the wall peaks, then fortified to my only route home. We were trapped. Our only escape was to the north through a pass into the lands where I thought I might gain allies. I had to move quickly, which meant I had to leave many behind, sacrifices to the wizards. So I left behind those I had conquered, those I had enslaved, the people of the mudlands. Even when I wake I feel their cold tongues flickering over the back of my neck. At this point, I'm going to get Ryan just to wait, or Ingham even, uh, there. I'm going to get her back so she can ferry more troops. 
Ah, uh, okay, so this kind of leads to the same place. There's another path there. Where does this take us? Diplomacy for her. Okay, so before we leave, let's deal with that. She's kind of trapped, which is good. Orange is the only real problem I have right now. But he is a problem. Quite a major one at that. Come on, town put on my booty. Damn it. Hey, on now. To worry about them retreating, which is great. Ooh, ouch. Goddamn, Ageling. Hello, technically, right back at you. Magic is a good one. I want logistics, is what I really want. So is there another base down here? Or is it just. The there's definitely someone down here. Um, it's not really the threat, that's the problem. Maybe she deals with uh, Métis. Get like a necromancer army, perhaps. I dream again. After all I have fought for, after all I had lost, the one time I asked for help I am betrayed. They were barbarians just like me, but when I asked them to join my army and fight against their oppressors, they refused. They even joined the enemy. I felt the rage hop beneath my skin like a fire that couldn't be put out no matter how much blood I spilled, no matter how many villages I raised. Then I'm standing alone here in the underworld amid a field of bones, and I can hear the silent screams of every skull. Screams for help, screams of the innocent I killed. I clap my hands over my ears and shout, I was wrong, I was wrong, I'm a killer. The sound disappears instantly and sensing that something is wrong, I open my eyes only to stare at the confused and frightened faces of my soldiers. Oh great, now I'm sleepwalking too. How do I get out of here? I need to go through this portal. Catch 
match you up with him. So how strong is this guy? Not very. We could build an undead army. Gonna get to their enemy base before the end of the week, unfortunately. Okay, there is no way of getting from one place to another. Ah, purple's out. Okay, that's one thing I don't have to worry about anymore. Wait, wasn't purple the one with Sandra? Was that blue? Blue, okay. Wait, did I not give him the army? Oh, fudge. Didn't actually give him the army. That was a rather big comical mistake, apparently. Okay. There's also a direction through there. Oh goody. Well, that's a problem. Has a big army. How strong is Isra though? Is she even strong? Maybe I need to send someone against her just to test the waters. If she's a 2 2 or something, not too fast. If she's a bit more than that, that could be a problem. Could be something I could deal with. How can this be? I don't recall going to sleep. Yes, I sense I am dreaming again. I ride to the top of a hill to watch my men kill the innocent. Out of all the mayhem, I focus on a single woman with fiery red hair. Exit a hut as she flees a pair of ogres. She runs and screams. I can't see her face and I know deep in my heart I don't want to see it. Then she falls, turns to face her pursuers. My sister. Even though I've never met her, she looks so much like my mother that it must be her. I raise my hand, open my mouth to shout to the ogres, but it is too late to stop them. And for once I thankfully wake before I witness the murder of my own blood, killed upon my command. I scream, lash out at my tent, I can't stand these dreams and what they're doing to me. I don't want to remember the things that I have done. Before I realise it, I've torn my tent to pieces. I lash out at anyone who comes near me. Alone, I shout, leave me alone. I'm not sure if I'm talking to my men or to my dreams.
Okay, with that army I can definitely deal with her with Adelaide. So let's get Adelaide out of here. I really do need Tarnum to kill Orange basically. This should be the army I need to start pushing back these guys. Okay, with your army I should be able to start taking down this necromancer. I'll have you scout as well. I knew something was wrong when Queen Alison joined us on the trail, followed immediately by her single frightened escort. She stared at me from crown to toe and frowned. I had a man to see you, privately. I nodded, barely able to stay in my saddle. I had not slept in two days and had very little rest for weeks before that. So we walk out of earshot of my men and my blurred vision clears long enough for me to see that she's angry. I received word that you have gone mad, she said. I didn't believe it, but now that I see you, I am taking over your command. Drunk with exhaustion, I forgot my manners and laughed in her face. It takes more than courage to lead men into battle, and woman, you don't know the first thing about fighting. I'm not about to let all these men die so some royal brat can exercise her dreams of grandeur. Go stitch a tapestry or something. Let a real murderer take care of the battles. It's what I'm good at. I turned my back on her. How dare you? This is my army and you will do what I say. Alison struck me in the back of the head. It didn't hurt, of course, but it startled me. Who did she think she was? Her hand flashed towards my face now, but I caught it. Gripped it a little too hard. I snatched up her free arm as well and shook her. She needed to learn how utterly weak she was, so I lifted her off her feet with ease. Then she kicked me in the groin. That ended the struggle. Never touch me again. She bolted away. I waited there, doubled over, for the other knights to collect me for my execution. But that moment never came. Oh shit, son. Shit just got real. <laughs> that was a really good bit of writing. I enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, resurrection. That's a massive spell for us. Truly, that is huge. Alaska just needs to get back to base. Fiona, can I just scout around here for a sec? Is that matey boy, I wonder? Oh, there's another base down here. It's shrouding the area. Well, she came from here, so I'm assuming she's going to be around here. Oh, I've got the biggest army now. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Oh, okay. I thought that was uh, for Kyle then. He wants evil hourglass, and he's going to give me wisdom if I uh, grab it for him. I just need to find where it is, because I don't have a clue. I'm assuming that Kyle's probably got it, to be fair. It wouldn't make sense. What do you think? 
So there must be another base down here. Queen Alison stayed with my unit to watch over me, no doubt. She's ordered one of the captains to teach her to use a sword. She's not a bad student from what I've observed. I try to stay low these days. I give a few orders because I don't want a conflict in the camp. From what I hear, half the men side with me and the other half won't be dead for touching their queen. It's a touchy time. One wrong move and the men will be fighting each other and our quest here in the underworld will be over. I think Alison knows that too, which is why I still have my head. Perhaps there's more than meets the eye with this woman. So at this point I am 100% certain that Queen Alison is 100% a um, ancestor of Queen Catherine Ironfist. A blind woman blocks your path and strangely she asks for you by name. When you approach, she speaks. If you continue south, you will find the path to the necromancer known as Sandro, thus ending your quest. However, if you have not explored all the way to the east of here, you may find it most beneficial to do so. There is a seer who seeks the ambassador's sash and will give you much experience for the item. Take the time to explore all areas thoroughly as there are many hidden treasures here. Then you open your eyes to find yourself in your saddle and the woman is gone. Was it all a dream? Only one way to find out. Okay, we need to defeat Orange for starters. But good to know that Sandro is south of that location. getting stuff I don't really want. Hmm. Also, where the hell's that? Um, do oh, I want pathfinding. Also, there's a university here. See what else there is. Annoying. Ah, for Kyle. Wow, he won? Holy shit. That's a lot of vampire lords. One. Oh my god, that's so much stuff. Okay, the one good thing I can see is he hasn't got much in the way of mana. But he does have enough. Okay, we're going to have to slow. I hope he doesn't have mass haste. Holy shit. Oh my god. He's got expert ballistics, that's for sure. Oh my Christ. <laughs> oh, right back at me. Okay. Okay. Sure, if I have a uh, solution to that, you know, I don't have water magic, and I don't have. Um, I do have anti magic, which might not be the best thing to use. I do have. Oh, I can use level one spells. Oh, that's hugely bad. Okay, that is genuinely very bad. Um. Okay. Okay, well that... Mm. Need to kill these vampire lords if nothing else. I have got to die. We can kill the vampire lords, there is a chance. Let's wait this out. I want to see what 
They do. Okay, they haste him. Okay, well we can slow him back down. He's got one more slow or haste in him. Man, if they went for Vampire Lords there, we would have been real bad. Situation. That is all they can do now, so... We've got to kill these um, vampire lords. They can still, like, get back to full health. <laughs> full um, life. Christ. Three. I don't think they can get there. I'm glad they didn't go for um, the Zealots. This is definitely winnable from this situation. Um, three, three, two. Oh my god, 291 though. Pretty sure we've got this in the bag now. Yeah, this is our game to lose. Lovely. What a tough fight. I knew this was going to be the big one, but... Woof. Well, maybe boy can't escape, so... Ooh, GG's. That was an outrageous fight. Oh, he has Sword of Judgment. Well, I'm sleeping again, and the nightmares have returned, of course. It's like some twisted maggot has crawled inside my memories and is torturing me with them. 
torturing me, especially with my sister's face. The bloodthirsty ogres are almost upon her, and this time I know I am not going to wake up. Just as their clubs are about to smash her head to a pulp, a man on horseback comes out of nowhere. She's saved. He slays one of the ogres with his first swing, then turns his horse to dodge the attacks of the other. He dispatches this enemy just as easily. My sister is dragged into her feet and helped onto the horse behind the armoured hero. It's too late to save the rest of the village, so he flees. I am being shown something else, something that can't be my memory or a nightmare, but I know in my bones that it's real. My sister and the man who rescued her sit beneath a tree together. This is much later, and my sister's belly is plump with child. His child. She's happy. Then the man finally turns in my direction and I can see his face. It's Rion Griffinheart. Ooh, interesting. How the plot thickens. <laughs> So this little girl happens to be one of his descendants. Ah, oh, that is amazing. There is definitely some underground base here. Ooh, hello, who's this? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so the base must be to the... L it could be to the left or right, actually, to be fair. There she is, Queen Alison, dressed in sturdy leathers as she trains. The red hair, the sharp eyes. They are the same as my mother's and the same as my sister's. How could I have missed it? I've assumed some of the details, but a young Rion Griffinheart must have saved my sister from my own bloodthirsty armies. Later, they fell in love and married, and by the time Griffinheart formed the Kingdom of Arathia, my sister was pregnant with their first child, my niece, Alison, my family. <laughs> so amazing. That is some cool lore. Today, when Queen Alison prepared for her sword exercises, I approached her and before everyone dropped to one knee. Bowing my head, I said, My Queen, I beg your forgiveness. I've been a fool. I never once raised my head, but kept my gaze firmly on the ground and tried not to shake noticeably. I've never bowed to anyone before. Of course I forgive you, Satanum, she said. I acted poorly as well. No, you were not at fault. My only excuse is I have not been well. You appear to be getting more rest. Good. This place has disturbed us all, but no one nearly as much as you. I wonder why. Who knows, I say. Unlucky, I guess. I had more crimes to dream about. So what I want to see is if I'm going to get logistics from that university, and if not, I'll pick up pathfinding. As for orange... I feel like there's definitely another base around here somewhere. Question is where? Oh, it's got to be there. The one place I didn't check. Oh, okay. Well, Orange has been vanquished. Okay, no. So let's pick up pathfinding then. I'd, I would have preferred logistics, but what can you do? So in that case, there must be a... Um... Sandra must be around here somewhere. Ah, okay, down there. That's how we get to him. Alright, let's pick up pathfinding. Logistics would have been better, but it's fine. I can live with uh live with that. Ah, maybe not. How the hell do we Okay? Um, 
It has to be underground then. The nightmares still visit me at night, but when I wake I find it easier to forget. They're not showing me anything I haven't already experienced. Although, I wonder about the dream that revealed the identity of Alison's mother. It hadn't seemed like the rest. But who cares, I have a family now, and we're growing close. I'm even taking over as Alison's instructor. If she's going to learn to fight, I'm going to make sure this woman knows how to take care of herself. Need to find where the hell Sandro is now. It's going to be underground somewhere, that's for sure. I've decided not to tell Alison who I am. There would be too many questions about the past, and I'm afraid if she learns that I used to be the Barbarian King, that she will no longer trust me. Right now, I need her trust if we're going to survive. I would love to embrace her as my niece, I ache for it in fact, but that would be wrong and selfish, so I turn my thoughts towards saving her father's soul. With a newfound determination, it's the least I can do. I owe Griffin Hart a debt for saving my sister's life. Okay, there's the teleporter. How the hell do I get there? There is definitely not a path there, is there? I'm not just being an idiot. Oh, there f is. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. I can't believe I missed that. How did I miss that? That is shocking, in fact. Yeah, okay. Alright, there is nothing down there. I was just a fool, and I completely missed that. I have no idea where that artifact is. I definitely don't have it, so... Oh well. What? Alright, that should be the end of this mission. Sandro, my boy. Feels bad to kill you, but I've got to do what I've got to do. Why is he so weak statted? I wonder. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played.
GG's boys, GG's. Congratulations, you've completed your quest to defeat the enemy hero Sandro, and victory is yours.